very brave to invite us into your kitchen. And this literally like this is it. I can almost like stretch the whole thing. It's there's just a refrigerator off to the side. That's all um, space wise. So um, thank you guys for having me. This is the second uh, group this month. The first um, two. So two Tuesdays ago, we talked about um, celebrity TV chefs, um, people who cook on TV, and it was a lot of fun. So for this cooking uh, cook along virtual cooking class, I decided to, to do one of the favorite TV cooking personality, not a chef. I didn't think of her last time, Rachel Ray. Uh, one of her recipes I've been making for a long time, it's called Long Live the Chicken a la King. Um, I've probably been making this for like almost the whole time I've lived in Austin, which is, I moved here in 2005, so it's been a while. Um, the first thing, if you're cooking along, just look at whatever your biscuits whatever brand you have, whatever the temperature it says. If you're using Pillsbury Grands, um, heat oven to 350 or 325 for a nonstick cookie sheet. So I'm gonna do 350. Um, and then you're gonna put them on the cookie sheet. Like this one says, um, put them one or two inches apart on an ungreased cookie sheet. So this is the part, I don't know if you guys ever, use these canned like biscuits or crescent rolls or anything much my mom I used to like torture her I'd peel it and I would like the anticipation of <laughs> popping noise yeah so I have to see if sushi like if that made her ears ring over in Indiana um so I think the reason she calls for grand biscuits is just because they're bigger than the regular sized ones so you get a little more carbs which is delicious especially like winter comfort food but you just want to separate them and you can kind of see like a bigger seam between the two. The grands are tricky because they have layers, so it doesn't really matter. It's even if one biscuit's a little bigger, it'll still be delicious. But I'm just spreading them out on baking sheet. And then there's two options. Well, three, you could leave them plain on top, no seasoning. But um, the recommended toppings are either cayenne pepper or paprika, just a little dusting right on top. I usually do half and half and I try to remember what the pattern on one of the spicy ones looked like so I don't give it to my son um, who's nine. But so I'll do one half with just a little bit of paprika on top. It's kind of like deviling eggs a little bit. And then maybe I'll go the other direction with the cayenne or just a little lighter. I, I like the spicy kick from the cayenne. Um, you could also do both if you wanted a little of each. Or there's like half sharp Hungarian paprika, which is very, very spicy. Like, I don't know why half, <laughs> but it's very spicy. Um, so I, I can tell these ones are a little lighter on the topping. So I'm just going to set that aside until the oven is ready for them. Um, and by the way, if anybody has any questions at any time or wants to jump in, feel free. Very laid back, conversational. Just like if you're actually hanging out in the kitchen with me, we just have a good time. It's no, it's trying to keep people from being stressed out while they're cooking. I'm gonna open up a bottle of wine then. Yeah, well, we have, well, we have some wine. I'm actually gonna open that also for the chicken, but also I'm gonna have a glass of it. Um, so for cooking with wine, a lot of people say like, don't like use a cheap kitchen wine and you totally can. But I like bu buying something that's not like expensive, but that I actually like drinking. So like this one, Line 39, it's a Sauvignon Blanc and it's $12.99, which I feel like I'm okay with putting a cup's worth into my dish and then drinking the rest. Because I, I, sorry, yes? Did somebody have a question? Oh, sorry. Um, so we get a medium saucepan. I have a, like a little Dutch oven, but just something deep that you can um, put the poaching liquid put the chicken in so we're gonna do a cup of wine and you can you can do just chickens chicken broth if you want or just um sub the wine for some water you don't have to use wine if you're not um, in interested in it but if you are using one for cooking it's great to have the same one to drink while you're enjoying your dinner um, and then, so to that, we're going to add two cups of unsalted chicken stock. I'm actually going to use water and a base. Where did I, oh, 
I'm gonna fill this up and I have this concentrated chicken broth stuff that I have been meaning to use up and it's gonna need to be used soon. So just adding cold water in here up to three cups. And I've actually, I've never used the concentrate for this dish before, but I feel like it's gonna work. So I'm gonna put these in the saucepan and then this is the one I have. It's a Penzi's chicken soup base. Um, if you're, well, there's Penzi's all over the country and funny enough, they, they're based in Wisconsin, the town next to where I lived for like 10 years, but I didn't know about them back then. But I was in college, so it was like, maybe I wasn't cooking as much. But on the back of it, um, I think it's kind of like better than bouillon type of thing, but this one has really like good ingredients, I think. Um, it suggests using three quarters of a teaspoon of this per eight ounces of water. So I'm gonna do a teaspoon and a half. And you're supposed to like melt it in warm water, but we're gonna bring this whole thing to a simmer. So I'm just gonna put it right in here. Like you don't have to be precious with it, I don't think. But it also recommends using this um, when making rice, add a teaspoon of chicken base to boiling water for rich flavor. I think that would be nice. Ashley, what is that stuff called? This is called chicken base for soup and seasoning. It's from Penzi's. Um, I can, I can type, I, I can put their website in for you if you want. I think it's just, I think it's Penzi's, P-E-N-Z-E-Y-S spices.com. Okay. It, the closest location to Austining, if, if you're in Austining, is um, in like Norwalk, Connecticut. They, they used to have closer ones, but um, yeah, they, they have really great spices. And at normal times, you can go in and open all the spice jars and sniff everything. So you can tell the difference between like four or five different types of cinnamon just from smelling them. It's wonderful. And it's a great distraction for kids when they're not in school. Like under normal circumstances. I'm gonna so, put the website in the chat yeah. box. Yeah. Um, I'm putting this over high heat just to bring it up to a boil and then I'll let it come down to a simmer when we put the chicken in. And then I add a bay leaf. These are also from Penzi's. This is a sad looking assortment of the crumbs of the end. So I'm probably gonna put a couple little crumbs instead of one. Yeah, you can buy all sorts of different sizes of bags there and they, um, they source their ingredients, like they don't have a middleman. So instead of someone getting the spices, selling it to someone who sells it to the store, who sells it to you, I think they cut a step out. So it's like, it's a lot more budget friendly and the quality is really, really nice. Um, and then I like adding, you don't have to, um, a couple, like three whole black peppercorns, just like the kind that are in a grinder if you have one. You can also do a couple grinds of fresh black pepper. I just like when I do a shrimp boil, I do this bay leaf and I cut up a lemon and I just think it adds a nice flavor to the water because otherwise there's no, there's like no salt in this recipe and stuff. So I changed a few things because I think it's a little bit, adds a little bit more flavor, but totally optional. Um, yeah, and I'll show you too, their red pepper flakes. I get bags and I fill them like they're actually red. They're not those sad little brown things, you know? So I like their stuff. They have um, pretty good deals if you're on their email list. It is, uh, just to warn you for either way, it is, their emails got pretty political the last couple of years. So I don't know if they still are post-election, but just to let you know if that's something that would deter or encourage you. Um, yes. All right, so those are in there. As soon as that comes to a boil, we'll slide in the chicken. I'm just gonna stir it a little bit to kind of dissolve. These 2021 Jeep brand vehicles for under 200 a month. I think someone's got a commercial on. <laughs> yeah, could, um, could you try to mute yourself if you- I, I just did it. I, thank you, yeah, thanks. It popped up because I had put something on, on um, pause. All right, so after that, we've got um, about two pounds, four pieces, three pieces of chicken. And what I learned over time of making this is even though you would think something like poaching chicken, you wouldn't need to worry about them being the same thickness. I feel like if one side of the chicken is real thick and the other side isn't, it can, one side gets a little rubbery and overcooked. So I like to look at like you see how like skinny the side is and this one's a little thicker. So if you have ones like that, 
I would recommend using a meat mallet and just kind of whacking it to, on the thick side. Um, I just think and it, it'll cook a little faster that way too. Um, Cause we're gonna have some nice chunks of chicken but I always pull it out and check just to make sure cause even chicken just makes me nervous like that. So, um, and I'm using a different cutting board for actually using the raw meat. I used to think plastic was the way to go with chicken because I was worried about the like salmonella, but bamboo doesn't, isn't porous. It doesn't absorb, it cleans really easily. And plastic, you can cut it and then like stuff gets trapped in there that you can't wash out. So I'm very pro bamboo. This butcher block is also bamboo, but I wanna be able to like ditch this. Um, so I'm just gonna kind of like hit it on this side until this side's a little bit flatter than that side. And it's a good way to like take out your aggression on like, okay, snow days and you know, all the things that are stressing you out a little. So, and it's not, I'm not making it like thin like for chicken parm. I'm just making it all a little bit thinner. Um, see, my water is almost boiling. So this one, um, I've done a lot of virtual cooking classes, but I haven't done this one before because it's uh, mostly Rachel Ray's recipe. Um, and I don't have an overhead camera set up anymore to make it work over the um, stove top for you to see what's going on, but I'll do my best to show you what's going on and bring things over to the camera. And if you wanna see something, let me know. I'm happy to like cart the saucepan over here. It's not a far walk, it's a small kitchen. <laughs> Um, and yeah, so next month, March 9th, we're going to have a plant-based cookbook discussion. So we're just talking about everybody. A lot of people are trying to incorporate more. Wait, can you hear me over the hammering? Okay. <laughs> I was like, let me not be wasting my breath. <laughs> um, my water is boiling. I'm just turning it down a tiny bit, like medium. Um, so we're going to have a plant-based cookbook cooking discussion, cooking cookbook discussion. Um, I'd love it if you bring your favorite cookbooks that have great vegetable recipes. They don't have to be strictly vegetarian or vegan cookbooks. Um, if you want to talk about your favorite ways to prepare like previously hated vegetables, you know, it's, it's nice to have it be conversational and like anything you guys want to talk about food related, cookbook related, because the library is an excellent place to check out cookbooks before you buy them. So I got my chicken pretty much all the same ish thickness now. And then I'm just gonna slide it in. And you want the broth to be like bubbling, but not boiling, boiling. So I'm gonna slide those in. Yeah. And set the timer. I'll check them after 10 minutes. Um, so yeah. And if yours are thinner, you might want to check them a little sooner than that. Okay. And Ashley, if, yes. Yep, a question. You didn't cut those, right? You just kept them the regular yeah, size. Yes, you could absolutely cut them if you wanted to just like make them a little smaller. Okay. Um, and we're going to cut them into bite sized pieces later, too. Um, so they don't have to be pretty and whole or anything. Um, Alexa. Set a chicken timer for 10 minutes. If your chicken, if the liquid isn't covering your chicken breast, you might want to throw either throw a little bit more chicken stock or water in there. Alexa, stop. She's giving me facts about chickens in Egypt. I don't know. Um, <laughs> uh, very educational. I do play the question of the day trivia on, on that every morning while I'm making my coffee. Um, my oven preheated, my oven is preheated. All right, um, how many, I threw away my biscuit can before I looked at how many minutes it needed to cook. Hang on, I'm gonna look it up. Uh, I think it's like 10 or 12 minutes. Can you imagine before the days of the internet? <laughs> okay, let's see, 13 to 17 minutes, beautiful. Alexa, set a biscuit timer for 13 minutes. 
that I love because you can name the timers and like keep track, especially like big meal prep or like back when we were entertaining and stuff like that. I didn't know she could multitask like that. See, that's my. Oh, yeah. I sometimes yeah. have like four or five of them going at the same time. Um, so while the chicken is poaching, biscuits are baking, we're going to make like a mushroom onion mixture. So medium heat, we're going to add two tablespoons of unsalted butter and about a tablespoon of olive oil and just put it over medium heat. And if you um, didn't get it and you're planning to make this later, there's a recipe card, printable recipe card available for you. Um, can reach out to the library or you can uh, message me and I'll send one to you. So I'm gonna put it on medium heat. This recipe needs that like half, I put a white onion, I have half a yellow onion I think here and my, these are these um, silicone reusable bags. I love these, I heat things up in the microwave in them. I like cook sous vide in them. Like it's crazy, it, they're so versatile and you can freeze things in them and they stick like, they stack real nice. Um, I have to, things have to be like worth the space in my kitchen when I, <laughs> when I go to use them. So half a small onion, or if you really like onions, just throw the whole onion in. It's not a big deal. I'm just gonna dice this. And usually, so usually when I cook, my board is right here and I do everything and I just kind of drop it into the pan as I'm cutting. And you don't have to be like specific on what size. You can't really tell. It just turns into this nice sauce afterward. Um, and I like, especially when I'm carrying it from this counter over to there, this bench scraper has got sides. It's like, I've had it for well over a decade. It's like my favorite thing. Um, it's great. So when you pick the things up, they don't like fall off the edge as you're carrying them around. So I'm going to put that right in with the butter and the oil and then mushrooms. You can use any kind of mushrooms that you like, I suppose, but white mushrooms work really well here. And I feel like they have that classic like chicken a la king taste. Um, I'm not too finicky with cleaning my mushrooms, but you can just like wipe them with a cloth if you want. I have one of these little brushes, little vegetable brush, you can do that. If they don't have like dirt on them, I'll rinse them, I don't really care. I don't, I don't think, sometimes they're very dirty, but a lot of cultivated mushrooms are awfully clean. So I just kind of give them a once over and see what I think they need. Um, you're just gonna slice them evenly. If you have a strawberry slicer or hard boiled egg slicer, or I think this is called like a multi-purpose slicer. Um, I like using it for mushrooms because they're nice and soft. Do you have, oh, I thought you were gonna say you had the same one. Um, it just slices them really evenly. I like it and I like this one because it's got sturdy blades instead of those little wires like the one that grew up with. So either way you cut them, just as long as they're about the same size, that way they'll cook at about the same rate. Um, just gonna wipe a couple of these off. How's your prep going over there, Sherry? You got a thumbs up? Good. Does it already smell good? Cause it already smells good in here. Awesome. I love that. That's one of the coolest parts about cooking like this in other locations from other people. You're kind of like, you're sharing the same meal together, but not, but you don't have to be like super close proximity to each other to be able to do it. I've had like families do some of my classes where they'll be like on opposite sides of the country and all of my family's long distance. So it's like, it's a nice way to spend some time together. Um, let's see, what else? Actually, I'm putting the yeah. onions, I'm sorry to, uh, to interrupt. I'm putting the onions in with the olive oil and the butter as soon as it's kind of melted and ready. Yep, I threw mine in before the butter was even melted and I think it's gonna be just fine. <laughs> but yeah, you can, it's just kind of like medium heat. We're just like softening everything. You know, the, the geek in me, um, Ashley, I looked up this recipe because I knew it was older than Rachel Red. Oh yeah, it's like a very. Uh, yeah, it's like from the late 1800s. And, mm -hmm. um, Quite a few different people have claimed the ownership of the original. Oh yeah, chicken a la king. Yep, and I'm not sure. 
on the the recipes you found what is is there like a difference is it not with like biscuits or is it because I'm figuring like Rachel Ray's spin yeah I mean it, it it seems like it went through um sometimes it's used wine sometimes it uses sherry and it does seem like there's always a um a flaky dough like um like mm -hmm. a, like a um like a file a pastry yeah I was gonna say this this filling would be great topped with like a puff pastry round or something yeah. like that would be really like pretty because this is definitely like a home style looking type of dish oh I get one that I didn't cut um so I'm gonna throw that some, some hotels somewhere oh I'm sure yeah it's like which place takes, in buffalo takes made, ownership for it, invented right? buffalo wings mm -hmm. okay so just every once in a while Let's throw it around a little. And you could, I mean, I feel like you could add whatever types of vegetables you like in, in here if you if you like them cooked, like something like maybe with that same kind of texture. Peppers might be nice. They might make it a little sweet though. Um, I'm just gonna flip one of my pieces of chicken is like not quite covered. So I'm gonna turn it up a little bit. So my bubble kind of subsided over here. Okay, going, let's see where we are over here. Um, so it should take like five-ish minutes for them to get tender. And then once they do, we'll sprinkle some flour over the top and that'll help thicken it when we ladle the broth in later. Um, so pimentos, I swear I can never find the same type of jar twice. So <laughs> there are like, these ones are uh, sliced already pimentos. This one I got like in the Mexican cooking aisle. They also, if you can't find ones that are labeled pimentos, get um, uh, red bell pepper, uh, smoked, sorry, roasted red peppers. Um, the funny thing is these both are, okay, so these ones are fancy, apparently. These are fancy pimentos and they have red pimento pepper, water salt, brown sugar, citric acid, and calcium chloride. The sliced pimentos, not fancy. <laughs> pimentos, water, salt, citric acid. So I guess the brown sugar makes these a little fancy. That's all you need is a little bit of brown sugar, apparently. Um, let's see if I can actually open this. Just every kind of every time I'm over in this vicinity, I stir the mushrooms around a little. I'm gonna turn my heat up a little because they're looking still pretty raw. If they start browning a lot, turn it down. Um, I have had this, we got this like freebie, um, you know, from someone on the street in the city, like handing out like to open jars was from a bank in Astoria, which I've never lived in Astoria. It recently ripped. And so, but I feel weird, like buying a jar, oh, like a, it's a piece of like silicone, right? Like it's not anything it's not fancy, like there's no brown sugar in it. So. Um, I don't know. I'm like looking on Amazon, like, do I need to look on Amazon for this? I feel like it's a little ridiculous. Um, it was a great, like, it literally lasted. I you used it, right? Yeah, well, I I'm, mean, I'm, it's, it's got like, look at that. That's ridiculous. There's the holes all over it, just recently kind of shredded. So it's lasted like 16 years. Didn't do any business for the bank, but. Um, so these ones are sliced. I'm probably going to slice them a little bit more on my cutting board. If you have a roasted red peppers, you know, slice them into strips and go across. Yes, Sherry. Um, did you say that when the mushrooms look like they're pretty well sauteed that that's when I add the flour? Not yet. Um, not yet because the chicken, wait. Sorry, my bad. Oh, Alexa, stop. Apparently the chicken might be done. So um, yeah, you, we're gonna sprinkle, sometimes with the timing, I have to sprinkle the flour over and then kind of move it off the heat till the chicken finishes cooking. Um, let me check. I usually, I like to grab the biggest of the pieces of chicken and I cut into it and test to see if it's, if it's cooked through. I'm guessing no, but you never know. I do also have an insta read thermometer. I just feel like for chicken, just like looking at it when it's like this and we're gonna cut it anyway. Yeah, so I'll show you mine still a little bit pink in there. So that's gonna go back in. I'm gonna say like, 
We'll try another like four minutes. Alexa, set a chicken timer for four minutes. Did you hear me? Alexa, set a chicken timer for four minutes. Okay. Um, so my mushrooms are almost there. I feel like when your chicken is almost done, then you can sprinkle the flour in because I like to cook it for. Okay. Oh, my husband turned follow up on with Alexa. So every time I talk today, she's like following me up with other questions. Sorry, that has not happened to me before. Um, so I'm going to take this jar of pimentos. It says um, eventually we'll need, I put a four ounce jar, just a couple of tablespoons, whatever you want. I like to fold my hands over and just turn it upside down to get rid of the liquid. It's okay if you leave a little liquid in there. You could also use a strainer. I'm just all for minimal dishes when possible. Um, and these add like really nice color to it too at the end. Okay, so I'm gonna show you, this is what my mushroom, mushroom and onion mixture. It's like the mushrooms are no longer bright, bright white and they're starting to get a little bit of color on them. So I'm going to put my heat on like medium low for now. So I don't want to get too, I don't want them to burn while my chicken is still cooking. Oh, you can also, if you're doing this multiple timer with ALEXA thing, you can ask her to tell you how much time is left. It's like having a toddler, you just spell in front of them and they can't hear you. <laughs> so um, if I say, uh, Alexa, how much time is left? So she tells you that, I don't know if you could hear, but she tells you like the name of the timer and how much time is left on each of them, which is very nice. So, you know, if you have time to like go sit on the couch for a few. Um, okay. So I'm going to do two tablespoons of flour. I'm just going to sprinkle it over the top of the mushroom and onion mixture and just stir it in. This kind of this is what helps thicken it up into a gravy at the end. So the original recipe had called for you to um, I'm just I'm stirring this in to get the flour all incorporated so you don't see that raw flour anymore. But the original recipe said after this when you when you do put the broth in to whisk it in and I'm like how how am I going to whisk with like all these pieces of the mushrooms or onions are going to get stuck in the whisk and that's just going to not be fun. So I don't whisk it. I stir it in, um, but you do whatever makes you happy. Okay, Alexa, stop. So I'm going to look at the biscuits. Um, show you. Mine look almost done. So I can see the ones that were in the back of the oven are a little bit browner. So I'm going to rotate. So they were in like this. I'm going to rotate my pan this way for like another minute or two, just to get the other ones a little more brown. Alexa, set a biscuit timer for one minute. So then you can see like I'm starting to get a little bit of um, like flour stuck on the bottom of the pan here. I'm going to put just a splash of the poaching liquid in here and stir it in just to keep it from kind of going too far brown on the bottom. And then I'm going to turn the heat down until we're ready, till the chicken is cooked. So just doing that to kind of like delays, get the cooked bits off of the bottom of the pan for now. And then while we're waiting on that, chop up some parsley for garnish, which is totally optional, but it's delicious. Alexis, stop. Um, it's really nice. I like the bright flavor of it on top. So I just, these ones were particularly dirty from Stop and Shop this time. I don't know, like they pulled them right out of the ground and threw them in a bunch. So um, if you ever, these, I use them, um, they're called unpaper towels and they're, they hook onto, I got them on Etsy. They, they have like all sorts of patterns and they go right on your paper towel roll. Alexa, stop. I love them because they're terry cloth on one side and they're really great with moisture. And I've started using so much less paper towels since I started using them. 
Um, gonna get. How do you get it back on the roll? Um, I'll show you in a minute. Okay, sorry. No, what no, are no. They called again? Sorry. Oh, you're, they're called. Say, they're called innovations are are, are awesome. That's yeah, so I cool. Can, um, they're called unpaper towels. There's a whole bunch of different people who make them. Oh. I can. Um, I will send you a link to the ones that I like in a minute. Um, so environmentally friendly. Well, That's it's, awesome. They're great. I really like, I, I use paper towels now for like um, raw meat mm. or really thick grease. But other than that, we don't really use them much. And I figure if I can at least offset how much paper towels my mother-in-law used, <laughs> like I'll be good because <laughs> she is like very much a paper towel fiend. All right, so I'm taking that same chicken out and I'm gonna cut into it and see if it looks like it's cooked through. How's your chicken look? She's testing hers. Okay, that's much better. It'll cook a tiny bit more in the sauce, but not a ton. So I'm gonna pull all four chicken breasts out. And if you have a cutting board that's got a little well around the edge, it'll help catch any extra juice. But you can turn the burner with the chicken off. Sorry for giving you the back view right now, but okay. I'm gonna set this to the side just to cool a little bit while I cut that. And we'll start ladle at a time getting the cooking liquid minus the whole peppercorns and the bay leaves, unless you want to bite into those later, which is not fun. Um, let me show you, I'll show you what this looks like. So instead of like ditching this water, we're going to use this, um, well, mine water and chicken base and wine in slowly into the saucepan. That way it'll start thickening up. So just like a ladle or two and then spin it, uh, spin it, stir it around, let it thicken for a moment, then add a little more. So, and then this should be about like medium heat, your uh, skillet with your onions. Let me Do you end up using all the liquid? Sometimes. So that's why I didn't put an exact amount. Sometimes I use most of it. Sometimes I use all of it. It uh, depends how long, like if it, it thickens, but once you go, if you add too much, sometimes it'll be a little liquidy, but it tastes great either way. So you're just kind of like looking for a gravy, like sauce, however you, um, whatever texture, I guess you prefer. Um, let's see. I've, oh, so I've had a couple different brands, brands. These are people that make them in their homes of unpaper towels. They snap together. So each one of these has three snaps. I like this, this particular seller. She makes three different snaps. I think she's from somewhere in New York. And then when you buy them, it comes with, I have a lot of them on my roll. <laughs> they're expensive, but I feel like they're worth it. Her, the seller that I'll share the link for, she gives you this little like, waffle grid thing that snaps onto your paper towel roll and then you snap one onto here the last person i got them from had this situation it was like three little elastics and those all had a little pin also um both are fine i think this is a lot easier um and she's you really you wash them when you yeah so i wash them um cold water and no dryer sheet, like no fabric softener, because if you wash towels with fabric softener, they don't absorb um, the moisture very well. Like they smell nice and they feel nice, but they won't dry things off as, as well. So I was just adding another spoon of the liquid in there. And you can see like, we're gonna put the chicken back in here, but it's getting a little saucy now. Sounds scandalous, but. You still have the you still have the heat on those mushrooms, so those are kind of. Like I do, yeah. That's still cooking. I have that on medium. Um, I did just remember to turn my stove or my oven off though, so I don't have hot hot stove heating up or oven heating heating up my kitchen. Um, once we get the chicken chopped up, to go back in there too. Um, I'll let it like if it needs to reduce a little more, like if it's looking a little thick, I'll let it do that then. I'm just gonna 
roughly chop up some parsley to sprinkle on top. Again, totally optional. It's nice though. Um, and then, scoot that off to the side. Like I said, I think these pieces of mento are a little big. So like usually bite size is kind of nice. So I'm just gonna like chop them in halves or quarters. You can buy already diced ones, but like I said, I, I swear the store doesn't cover, doesn't carry the same type twice ever. Um, some of these are actually pretty small. Did, were you able to find already diced ones, Sherry? Oh, sorry. I asked. I sorry. I picked <laughs> yeah, Sorry. Um, I actually had some left over that were small diced ones, and oh, then nice. I took some roasted peppers, and I kind of cut them the same, so they would all be somewhat perfect. Yeah, I love that. And then you're using up like half a can of something too. Actually, in the way than the pepper in the container. I couldn't. I'm sorry. I couldn't hear what that last thing was. Oh, I just said the roasted red peppers that I added to it because I didn't have additional pimentos in the house. Mm -hmm. um, they sort of seem nicer than the pimentos in general, but I know it'll have a slightly different yeah, you know, taste. Yeah, I think, I think it'll be a little sweeter. All right, so I'm gonna add a little bit more liquid, but just so you can see like this is, ugh. sorry, hang on. It's like real thick now. Um, I'm gonna lift it up and just, Pour some in. And if you find that it's dissolving faster than you have time to uh, do whatever else you're working on cutting, you can just turn the heat down. It'll reduce a little slower. So I think I'm going to go to medium low. And we're going to add the pimentos. Yeah. Um, yeah, we can, I don't think the order really matters. I'm going to add the pimentos and a cup of frozen peas and that hot liquid will cook the peas. So does anybody else snack on peas frozen? Cause they're really good. I know it sounds weird. I've been doing it since I was a kid, like. Like their frozen grapes are good, but they're like, I guess you really have to like peas to like it, but I happen to. Yeah, <laughs> Especially good. the little, the little tiny ones. Wasabi peas are one of my favorite, like. There you go. Bowls. Those yeah. are good. Okay. So I've got the peas in there. I'm going to add the pimentos in there. Then I'm going to dice the chicken into like bite-sized pieces. Should be at least a little cooler to be able to handle now. Um, so I usually just cut it into strips and then chunks. And then if there's any like cartilage type of stuff at the edge, I just cut that off and leave it to the side. Um, had oh, so for the plant-based discussion next time, um, I have a bunch of cookbooks to share. I have a couple that are coming on hold from the library because that's another thing I really like about um, with the library system, you can search for any cookbook and as long as anywhere in Westchester has it in the library inventory, you can put it on hold and have it sent directly to your local one. Um, so I have a couple, I think I have Mark Bittman's How to Cook Everything Vegetarian because um, that's a good one. But there's tons. And actually, when I was at the Austin Library the other day picking up all these books, I was sitting there searching for this Jamie Oliver book. It's called Veg. And I was looking and looking and looking and I couldn't find it. And then all of a sudden, me and a librarian at the same time go to grab. There was two copies, though. Like we went to grab the exact the whole library, the exact same book. But she um, it was funny. She looked and she said, can I see the number on the side of the of the book jacket? And so I showed it to her and I was like, do you need this one? She said, yeah, I was like, okay, I'll take the other one. So luckily there happens to be two copies of it, but. That's funny. That's, that's cause they were filling the hold cause someone put a hold on it. Just like you just said. Yeah. yeah. Well, hopefully yeah. someone put a hold on it for next month's yeah, discussion. That's good. Yeah. 
And I'm just going to throw in there, Ashley, if someone um, finds out about a cookbook that nobody has, you can, um, we have a form that you can fill out to recommend that we purchase it. Um, And although the, the, what's the word I want that there's, it's different. You can get them on um, overdrive and Libby. Yep. Um, you know, if you don't need that tactile <laughs> sensation of a cookbook. I think if you have a color, like I have my Kindle's a paper white, so it's black and white and food doesn't look good in black and white. So I tend to like the actual cookbooks for that, but yeah, I definitely check that a lot. Um, so I'm just scooping up all this chicken as I cut it and just, you know, bite-sized pieces, um, putting it into the sauce, which over here now it's looking like it got quite a bit thicker. So I'm going to add a little more of the liquid. Um, oh, so for the cooking class next month, plant-based, I have a couple thoughts. I want to see what, what interests the group. Um, one is, and I've done this one virtually before and it's a lot of fun. They're sweet potato and black bean tacos with cilantro chimichurri ridiculously good with the beans and the sweet potatoes and a and a quick pickled red onions and we might make guacamole too because you know taco Uh tuesday actually it's a tuesday we should totally okay but the other option um i have a recipe for these falafel spiced chickpea flatbreads that those ones come together really quickly um that are a lot of fun um and they're very pretty they're actually they're one of the ones from my website that have gotten the most um people have remade them on like Pinterest which is really cool to see like something that you came up with in your kitchen and like somebody living somewhere else is like hey I made this it was delicious and then you see the picture of it, it's just it's I don't know it's like what is life it's so weird um but it's really cool uh and some people have done some really interesting like spins on the recipes and it's always it's just I love seeing what inspires other people to get creative in the kitchen. So get the rest of this. And basically, we got the chicken in here. I'm just gonna mix everything together and see if it looks saucy enough. Um, like I said, if it feels too thin, you can just turn up the heat and let it bubble down a little bit more. But once the peas heat through, it's done. How is yours? You're cutting the chicken is going good? Yeah. Yeah, the chicken, the size of the chicken breast can really cause a variance in how long it takes to cook. Um, you could totally use, I think you could use a rotisserie chicken, cut it up or leftover chicken, and then just warm some broth, microwave it, or just in the pan, put a little, the mushrooms and the onions, sprinkle the flour on, just add in chicken broth a little bit at a time so it gets thick and then tuck the rotisserie chicken back in there. And then that would be even easier for, I mean, I feel like when you're not like yapping about on paper towels and stuff, it's pretty quick, but uh, I feel like it's a pretty good weeknight meal, but that would make it even faster. So yeah. and I'm getting you the link for this. I, said, I feel like I'm always like one step ahead of with the roasted chicken because the roasted chickens, shop right, make such great chicken stock. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. So you, you make that, you freeze that, and then you can just pull out your so you have the stock in the freezer. So that's a really good idea just to make it with a yeah, and you can um you can use uh those store-bought chickens are so versatile too. Or if you're roasting one on your own, you can save it. Um you can roast two, you have a big enough oven, roast two, let one cool down, save that one for later, but you can use the bones from them for making your own stock. I like to save the trimmings from my vegetables and I put those in the freezer and one of those big stasher bags, like the size I showed you was a, um, is that a big one? yeah, they have like this like gallon size. It's a gallon. I think so. No, half a gallon. Um, and they have a bunch of different sizes and I use them for lots of things, but I store, I have one that's just like veggie scraps that's in my freezer. And then they have like pop-up ones that stand, um, to make filling a little easier. Um, so that link that I put in there, that's to Etsy. That's the seller that I got them from. Um, her name is, uh, where her shop is. Oh no, the item is unavailable. 
Oh, maybe it's because it was a custom item. Hang on. Oh, they're taking a short break. Okay. Well, if you click on that though, I think it'll recommend others to you. And if you want me to help you find some, you can totally email me and I'll help you find ones. Cause I'm like, I'm all about people being able to reduce their waste in the kitchen. So. Are there certain, is there a certain bamboo board brand or something that you recommend? I like that size that you- This, this butcher block? No, the other one. Oh, is, this I one? Think, yeah. Um, the one I was cutting the chicken on? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, this is, I, um, I don't know what brand this is. It's not, um, it's not on there, but I think I got it from Bed Bath & Beyond. Oh, okay. And I will <laughs> say the other one that I have in there, that's a, another version of this one. Uh -huh. um, I, I think this is totally bamboo and they crack like this. Yeah, mine, mine. Apart. Yeah. Mm. I think that's the thing if they're like not super pricey like this is a bamboo butcher block and it's stayed together really well but oh yeah yeah definitely yeah. Mm -hmm. cool. all right yeah so i i heard somebody say that a, a professional chef said that you're supposed to replace nonstick cookware every like two or three years and i'm like i i don't know <laughs> i don't know about that either <laughs> yeah no i know it's like replacing your spices every six months like yeah. i use a lot of different spices i personally won't do that but like yeah, so uh, different things work for different people. I just can't imagine investing in cookware and replacing it every two or three years, personally. Mm -hmm. um, so are you ready to play, Shay? I have a question. Yeah. So my family, I can, I absolutely can play, but my family really likes yeah. saucy stuff. Uh -huh. so it would occur to me that there's sauce in this, but there's not as much sauce. I mean, right. I might've had more chicken, whatever the case is. So I was thinking if the broth is already there, could I just thicken that and just make that into additional sauce? Have you ever tried to do that or it's not gonna work? Yeah, I actually, I kind of cheat this at Thanksgiving sometimes. Um, you can just, I would maybe take the broth out of that pan into like a, a glass measuring cup or something, melt a little more butter on the bottom, put some flour in that, and let that cook for like a minute or two first and then incorporate your your liquid the yeah because we're putting this over biscuits so they will you can put your biscuits on top so they don't get soggy if you want yeah <laughs> um oh so wait, let's see cayenne i've got the cayenne ones so these biscuits are kind of fun because you can just pull them apart in the middle otherwise use a bread knife and i usually put one on each side of the plate and then a ladle a sauce on top and then top them and throw a little um of the chicken ala king oh, sorry a little of the parsley on top um i will say while she's sauce thickening um uh whole the mushrooms i bought whole mushrooms it's usually more cost efficient to buy whole versus already sliced and the already sliced ones can go brown faster. Like if you're not going to make something for a few days, that's just kind of in general, whole ingredients are often less expensive. Um, like buying a whole chicken versus buying someone else already spent the time to cut it up for you. Um, so just a tip, but if you're, if you're low on time or you just want to get it done, absolutely buy the already sliced ones. I've definitely done that before. Um, and there's no like awards given out for like, you took no shortcuts. It's like, I feel like there's a lot, people put pressure on you to feel like you have to be this like perfect homemaker and all this stuff. It's like COVID aside, we're all busy. There's some days, yes, I want to make homemade pastry, but some days I want to buy sliced mushrooms. <laughs> I want to do that. Um, if you have any kids in your life that enjoy cooking or maybe would like to enjoy cooking this Sunday at noon Eastern, I'm doing um, a kid's cooking class for making hollow French toast with some strawberry sauce. Um, if anybody's interested in that, I have taught this one in person at the library before actually. So if you've been in the library and you've smelled French toast, I'm sorry. It was all for the team, not for you. Um, I've done this class virtually before and it's like ages five and up and the kids are great. Like they're so good with it. Um, and then on March 20th, I'm doing a pasta night. Um, balsamic roasted grape tomatoes over angel hair with some skillet garlic parmesan bread and a caper dill vinaigrette that you can put on a salad. Um, and then the two upcoming ones for the library are Tuesday, March 9th at seven, not six. The cooking classes are usually at six, but the discussions are at seven. So you can 
come on a full belly and you don't have to like leave hungry because you're looking at cookbooks for an hour. Um, we'll be talking about plant-based food. And then I think we'll call it that on Tuesday, the 23rd at six, we'll make the black bean sweet potato tacos. They're so good. And it's actually pretty fast too. Again, if you're not like yapping, that sounds interesting. The hollow one is that, no, it's um, right now I'm, we're just doing virtual. Um, it's that one's through, um, I'll, I'll share a link. This is my, um, my schedule for my own cooking classes. This one I'm doing through the library. Um, let's see. Okay, that link is my schedule for my own cooking classes. Um, and then we'll, there are already registration links for the March classes for the library up on their calendar. They're just, the recipe card in the materials aren't there with it yet, if that makes sense. So you gotta decide, you gotta like read the room and see how it goes. All right, I'm gonna portion this on. Oh, look at that time, it's 6.57, that's like right on. This is very heavy, but I want you to see like this luscious, colorful, it smells really good. Um, I do find that sometimes it can taste it now and see if it needs more salt and mix it in, but sometimes we'll just kind of at the table throw a little more salt on it if it's not like popping. Um, my husband tends to like things a little saucier than I do. I mean, saltier, saltier. Sherry's family likes things saucier. My husband likes things saltier. There we go. <laughs> um, and this is, I used to bring this when I worked in an office. I would bring it left over to work too. I would just put the biscuits in a little separate container and I would heat up the filling and I would cut up the biscuits into cubes and throw them inside of my Tupperware and just eat it like that. It was really good. So this will probably be good pot pie filling too, actually. All right, so here's the on loaded on the biscuit bottoms. I've got my spicy toppers. And then throw a little parsley on top, make it a little pretty. And that's it. And it is, yay, look at Sherry's. Yours looks great. Let me see. Oh, that's great, Sherry. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's so good. Awesome. Mm. Awesome. Um, I'm not I have to say, it looks really good. <laughs> I'm so glad. I hope your house smells amazing, too. My, my family's always tortured when I do these because they're like upstairs until I'm done and they're like, as soon as I finish the like, run down. That looks good, Sherry. Yeah. Um, it looks really good. Does mm. anybody have any other questions or anything that I can help you find? Or oh, Where do you get those towels? Um, so I the link that I had up, the shop is taking a break right now, but hang on, let me search. Unpaper towel. I can spell uh, there, too. There's quite a few unpaper yeah. towel links. Um, yeah, and and what you do you do then? You save them up and you wash them all at once? Yeah, yeah. And I, it took me a while to start doing cloth napkins on my dinner table, but I've been doing that now too. Um, I have a post on my website um, that needs to be updated, but um, since it seems that some of you are interested in this, this is um, kitchen waste. I have a post on 30 ways to reduce kitchen waste. Mm. Um, and I have like so many more to add to it. I'm going to update it soon, but that's a link to the post on my website. Um, just small things. Cause I feel like a lot of people kind of pressure, like zero waste. You can't, you know, you can't, you can't use a plastic straw. It's like, you can like anything you can do is, you know, is a step and you can't like drastically overhaul everything overnight. So like I started using, um, these, reusable coffee filters. I make a pour over every morning and I put this in and like just that I make like one or two a day. So like just the amount I feel like I'm saving there. I don't feel awful if I use a plastic straw somewhere. It's like, I think it's all about balance and mm -hmm. not scaring people away from trying to make small changes. Um, and I have, I have a whole, I have a list in my Amazon shop of tools that we talk about in these classes. And then I also have one specifically for um, green kitchen, like reducing kitchen waste type of things. Um, if either of those are of interest to anybody, but yeah, I love, I love talking about that kind of stuff. I'm like, 
I, I feel like I was born in the wrong decade, but I'm glad I have the modern technology because like I'm a bit of a hippie at heart, but yeah. That's great. Ashley, can I put those um, links on the LibGuide too? Is that okay? Um, so those links, so I, um, I have a link on the recipe cards and on the other like documents, there's a link to my main Amazon shop page okay. that you can link um, individual items. I have to send, it's like they have all these weird rules because I, it doesn't cost you anything additionally, but I get like two cents if you spend 10 so I, Amazing. Yeah, I can't put the Amazon one on the library website. So right. they, people should go to your yeah. website well, that's, to do that. But I was thinking the, um, the kitchen, the kitchen you know, less waste. waste I, can, one. Yeah, I can send you that link. Yeah, okay. Since yeah, I got it. It's okay. Yeah. That's the main Amazon shop. So I have different lists. I have one for like baking and one for cooking with kids and one for their, the first one up there right now is for virtual potlucks. So things we talk about in this class. Awesome. Um, hmm. And then I have... Cause there's a lot of really cool um, ways to reduce kitchen waste. So you have a question? Yeah. Um, about your links. So the one with the uh, TIDD.ly. That's, that's Etsy. Etsy. So yeah, I clicked on it and it brought me into it, Etsy. I Is realized something there of yours. No. So I realized after I sent it, it said that that seller is no longer. Like, Available. Yeah. Right. I think they're taking a break. So um the link I just put in there now is the reducing kitchen waste green cooking list on my Amazon uh, okay. site. The, um, on Etsy, if you search. Oh, is it the paperless towels? Yeah, that was the unpaper towels. Is that so, what you were using? Yeah, I was using them, but the particular person I used, because Etsy is all these like individual sellers, um, the person that I was using before, she's on a break right now, probably because of all that's going on in the world. But this link is a search for unpaper towels on Etsy. That'll bring you down a whole wormhole of other people who have, uh, who make them. And like I said, the things that I would look for are the attachers to put them onto your paper towel roll. I personally like having three snaps instead of two. Uh -huh. um, and the terry cloth on one side, because that's absorbent. Um, this is the second set I've bought. And some places will let you, like I, I asked her if she could split it in half and do two different patterns um but yeah if you if you find one that you're like I don't know if this one will be great if you want to send me a message I'm happy to investigate for you oh okay that's okay <laughs> thank you yep yeah there's some that look a little shoddy because you like this here's the other thing I like about this one so if you can find one like this my last ones I had had stitching around the perimeter this one also has an x through the inside holding the two pieces together a little better and I feel like that, that was really helpful. <laughs> they like, they're a little more sturdy. Um, uh -huh. Not that I'm doing anything crazy with paper towels over here, but <laughs> you know. Okay. Thank you. Yep. All right. Well, if anybody else wants to reach out to me, um, I'm on social media at Big Flavors. You can, I think I was copied on the email that Diana sent out. Yeah. Um, so my email address is there and if you're enjoying this tonight, let me know what you think. I would love to hear or see. And awesome. And my kitchen smells delicious. Yay! Thank you. Yay, that's awesome. awesome. I'm Thank so you. glad. Thank right. you for cooking Thank with me. And I hope to see you guys in two weeks. Yeah, see you all in two weeks. I Thank hope. you. Care. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Thanks, um, Ashley. Thank bye -bye. you. Bye. Thanks, Take care. Yeah. Yay. Come that on. was great. Yeah. That was great. I took a ton of pictures too, so I can share some of those awesome. with you later. Yeah. 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 So no, this, is, this is great. And then I usually do an Instagram app, like cooking class aftermath. I show what my kitchen looks like because I can't really clean as I go when I do these. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's great. Before and after. I yeah. Love it. Yep. <laughs> that's great. All, All right. right. So I will You're see you good. in. Two weeks. Two weeks. All right, Ashley. Very good. You Have take care. Night. Okay. You I too. love the sound of what we're going to make next time too. It's uh, so good. Yum. I mean, if you want to try joining for your kitchen. Yeah, I'm not that brave yet. <laughs> All right. I'll All see right. You. You take care. Bye. All right. Take care. Bye. Thanks. Yep. Bye.